Hi, I'm Nikki Hamilton, co-founder and owner of Hamilton & Hodson. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a basic box cushion using plain fabric so there is no pattern matching, with a zip but no border or piping. It is made from one piece of fabric that is folded in half, sewn down two sides and a zip in the third, as if you're making a scatter cushion. But then it is made three-dimensional by folding the corners the other way and sewing across the side seams. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Here's how to do it. Gather together all that you will need for the task. Sewing machine with a zip foot and a strong thread, conventionally one that matches the background colour of your fabric, but that is not always possible. Pins, scissors, a zip and slider. I use continuous chain zip which can be cut to the exact length required. Taylor's chalk, a tape measure, a metre rule or something to draw a straight line with and an iron. Now we need to work out the dimensions of your cover, so before we do that let me explain a few principles about cushions. The main principle here is that we start with the cushion and make the cover fit. The actual cushion, I refer to it as the cushion inner, needs to be the same size as the space it sits in, front to back and side to side. However, it should be a little thicker or fatter than the border of the cover we're going to make so that the cover is nice and tight on the cushion. Cushion inners vary, but are usually foam wrapped in polyester and stockinette. Stockinette looks a lot like tube grip, but is made from synthetic fibre and is not tight, but expands to cover any size piece of foam. The purpose of this and the polyester is to provide a softer feel and reduce friction between the fabric and the foam to reduce wear and increase the life of both. Other common options are polyester or feather filled cushions, but these are not within the scope of this tutorial. You also need to know that the zip seam is at the back of the cushion, in the centre of the border. The other two seams run along the centre of each side of the cushion, so that the only edge with nothing going on is at the front. Now for some maths. I find it helps to draw out a cutting plan and work out the size that way. The cushion I am covering is 13 and 3 quarter inches square by 3 inches thick. So I am making the finished thickness of this one two and three quarter inches thick, but keeping the other dimensions the same. Another thing you need to know is that I use a half inch seam allowance and three quarters of an inch allowance for zips. So we need to draw a rectangle that is 17 and a half inches wide. This is 13 and three quarter inches, plus the thickness of the cushion, two and three quarter inches, and two seam allowances of a half inch, and 34 and a half inches long. This is two lots of 13 and three quarter inches, plus two thicknesses of two and three quarter inches, plus two times three quarters of an inch to turn under at the zip seam. When orientating the rectangle on your fabric, you need to know which way round your fabric should go. The selvages always go at the sides, and if you have a pile, you always smooth the pile flat from the back or top of your chair or cushion, down or to the front of your chair or cushion. Now make sure the raw edge of your fabric is straight by pulling off the threads until you get one that runs all the way across. This is easier on some fabrics than others, but if you have a printed fabric you need to cut a straight line using the pattern as your guide and ignore the weave. Now cut off the selvage as if it is a bit tight it can prevent your fabric stretching. Measure and mark out your rectangle, then cut. Next is the zip. I usually just iron the 3 quarter inch folds in place, but you can pin as well if that is easier. Cut your zip to length, in this case it needs to be 17 and a half inches, but if you have one with a closed end then the actual zip bit will need to be 13 and 3 quarter inches. To put the slider on, peel apart the zip by about 1 and a half inches. Then with the rounded end of the slider towards the zip, slide one side of the zip to about halfway up the slider then do the same with the other side of the zip. When you have them level, it is a case of wiggling the zip and slider to get the slider to slide onto the zip. When it finally does, slide it to the middle of the zip, leaving the ends of your zip closed. Now to the sewing machine. The machine I am using here does not have a zip foot. I use a piping foot for almost everything, which does just as well. On this, I can't move my foot from one side of the zip to the other, which you can on a domestic machine. Doing that allows you to start from the same end of the zip each time. Starting at the same end each time means that the fabric on either side of the zip is pushed ever so slightly in the same direction so that the fabric on each side of the zip stays level. My machine has a different solution to the problem. It has a walking foot to minimise the movement of fabric. So position one folded end of your rectangle so that the fold comes halfway across the zip 
with the edge of your fabric level with the end of your zip. Lower the needle into your work and then lower the foot. Doing it in that order helps to minimise slippage. Now sew a straight line about a quarter inch away from the fold. When you get close to the slider, stop with a needle in the work, lift the foot up, move the slider to behind the foot and then put the foot down again. When sewing in one direction, the zip stays closed when the slider is moved, but in the other direction, the zip opens. Don't worry, keep sewing in a straight line, keeping the zip taut. Once you've sewn that side of the zip, we have to do the other side, which is a little fiddly, as we are forming one continuous length of fabric. Make sure when you line up the other fold with the zip that you've not twisted it and got the wrong side facing up. The same techniques apply here. Make sure the fold comes halfway across the zip and that you have your folds level with each other. Lower your needle into the work, then lower the foot and off you go. There is no need to reverse at the ends of the zip seams as we will be cutting the zip shorter later. Nor do you need to over sew it at this stage for the same reason. Now we need to fold the cushion cover out flat and inside out. Resist the urge to move the slider to one end, leave it in the middle with the zip closed either side of it. Pin down each side with your edges together and then sew half an inch away from the edge. Sewing through the folded zip is tricky, but don't worry if the machine won't do it as we will be cutting the ends off these seams as well. Once that is done, we're nearly there. It looks like a scatter cushion at this stage, but now for the transformation into a three-dimensional box cushion by simply opening out the corners. First, mark the edge that is folded with tailor's chalk on the fold near each corner. Then hold the fabric either side of the corner and pull them apart. Flatten out the seam and poke a pin through the sewing line directly into the chalk line on the other side and pin. You need the sewing and chalk line to be on top of each other because this means that the seams will sit halfway up the sides of your box cushion. You now must measure and pin across a corner at the point that is one and three eighths of an inch either side of the seam and chalk line, totaling two and three quarter inches across the whole corner. The other thing to bear in mind is whether the weave of the fabric is in line with your pins. It should be. If it is not, try and repin it so that the fabric weave is straight on each side and the measurements are right. Do this for all corners, including the zip corners. Use the zip as your line on one side instead of the chalk line. Once you've pinned them all, we now need to sew them on the pin line. Start three quarters of an inch from the edge, needle in, lower the foot and reverse to the edge. Sew forwards to the other edge and reverse again. When you sew the corners with the zip, make sure you over sew the zip to reinforce it. The moment of truth. Before cutting off the ears, turn it the right way round to make sure you are happy with it and you don't need to re-sew any corners. But how do you open it up? Just pull the zip apart in front of the rounded end of the slider, put your hand in and move the slider. Once checked and you're happy with it, trim off the excess to leave a half inch seam allowance at each corner. So to remind you, the pitfalls are 1. Not calculating or measuring accurately. 2. Sewing a wobbly line of stitching either side of the zip. 3. Not getting the ends of the fabric level either side of the zip, which will mean 4. It will be very difficult to keep the weave of fabric straight when opening out the corners. 5. Not opening out the corners accurately so that the seams and zip don't sit halfway up the sides of the cushion and you don't get the right size border. There you have it, a brand new box cushion cover.